Are you ready to sit down and sleeve up some standard? There's a plethora of options that await you, such as Simic Walkers. The main cards are a playset of Oko, Thief of Crowns, which will run you about $250, a playset of Questing Beasts, which costs about $150, don't forget the playset of Hydroid Crisis, that's about 130, and of course you'll definitely need a playset of Once Upon a Time, which is only about $70. But there's many more standard choices. You can also play Simic Ramp, although that deck still does need the playset of Oko, playset of Questing Beasts, playset of Crisis, and playset of Once Upon a Time. There's some subtle differences in the full list. If you really want to mix things up, there's always Bant Ramp in Standard, which in addition to the Oko, and addition to the Questing Beasts, and addition to the Crisis, and in addition to Once Upon a Time, is a deck that runs to Fairy, a full playset, and it's only $80 for those four cards on top of everything else. Or, you know, you could play Popper. There's no Planeswalkers in Popper, as the format just uses boring old cards like Lightning Bolt, Land of War Elves, Counterspell, Atog, Chittering Rats, Mull Drifter, Squadron Hawk, Grey Merchant, and, you know, other Magic cards from throughout Magic's history that are all apparently too powerful to play with in Standard, otherwise known as Oko Constructed. No Okos here, and that's okay by me. Best of all, the average fully upgraded Tier 1 Popper deck is only about $40 to $50 for the complete deck, and the format never rotates. This video will cover an absolute favorite of mine. Mono Black Devotion Control, a deck that can be put together for only about $50 and, best of all, has zero copies of Oko, zero copies of Nyssa, zero copies of Krasis, and zero copies of any Mythics because this is Popper. We may be playing with commons, but we're still playing with power and we're playing Magic the Gathering. Let's take a look. As I said, Mono Black Control is a popper favorite of mine. If you've never seen it in action, there's a great Friday night paper fight where the Loading Ready Run gang plays popper. And Kathleen is not only piloting Mono Black, but she's piloting this exact list. Five, six, seven. Gurmang. Gurmang, the mangly. I'll link that video in the description and I suggest you check it out. Despite the fact that this is a control deck, it has some fantastic aggro and tempo elements, and that means the deck won't just be grinding out long, slow games. The overall idea is to keep your opponent from gaining any ground early game with flexible removal spells, then build up Black Devotion for some serious life losses with Grey Merchant, or just a classic beatdown with Gurmag Angler. The ideal turn one is to either duress or keep a mana open with removal spells like Defile, Geth's Verdict, and Victim of Night in hand. Defile is great because if they drop an early game creature, your one to two swamps can usually answer them, but it scales as more swamps are played and can handle larger and larger creatures late game. Victim of Night is two mana to remove nearly any threat regardless of toughness, and I always try and prioritize Defile first, as Victim can come in handy for big bombs late game. Geth's Verdict handles hexproof creatures and can also be used strategically as an all-purpose removal spell against any situation where our opponent has a single nasty on board. The last removal spell is Tendrils of Corruption, a bit high-costed but worth it for the massive life gain it grants late game. This is a removal spell that can turn games around, as late game you might have half a dozen swamps in play and thus can get great moves like taking out an opponent's angler or other big beat stick while simultaneously gaining a great amount of life. So our deck's ideal curve is either a turn one duress or defile in hand, turn two quambage witches or victim of night in hand, hold up the removal to keep the opponent's board clear, or cast witches to start building devotion for a later game Gary and use them to pick off creatures with only one toughness, such as when playing against elf decks, or just as a solid blocker given the witch's decent toughness of three. Turn three, the best play is Chittering Rats. This card is so much fun. Assuming our opponent hasn't somehow emptied their hand by turn three, they're going to have to place a card from hand on top of their library. 
which you might as well read, your opponent skips their next draw step. This is part of the tempo of the deck, and canceling out an opponent's card draw can put you ahead by a lot, especially if you pull off more than one casting of rats over the course of a game. Meanwhile, rats add two black mana to our buildup of devotion for that future Gary, and they are a nice 2-2 creature to boot. So if we've successfully controlled our opponent's board over turns one and two, we usually can start swinging him with rats to begin the aggressive actions of this dastardly deck. Our alternative turn three play is Whisper Agent, of which the deck runs a full play set. Whisper Agent can flash in, so if we are not dropping Chittering Rats on turn three, the best move is to wait until our opponent's turn and possibly use Whisper Agent as a flash in blocker or just an end step surprise. Either way, Agent has two black devotion like rats, can swing in for three damage, and we get to surveil, ensuring a better chance at a desired draw and potentially adding acceleration to our graveyard pile for a future angler. Turn four, our choice of drops are either a Pestilence or the Dark Confident of Pauper, Thorn of the Black Rose. I love both these cards so much. Thorn of the Black Rose makes us the monarch, and hopefully at this point in the game, we've kept our opponent's creatures in the graveyard meaning we are likely able to retain the crown. Assuming we do, drawing two cards per turn instead of one is another tempo play, which will quickly lock down games as we draw more removal answers to just about anything our opponent might try to throw our way. Best of all, the thorn has death touch. So if they do land a creature and try and swing in with, well, anything, it can serve as a body of blocking and removal as well. I love this card. Pestilence wins games outright. For one black mana, Pestilence deals one damage to each creature and each player. All we need is mana, and to be at a higher life total than our opponent, and Pestilence more or less wins the game for us. Use it to sweep the board and bring our opponents down to zero over several turns. Now the enchantment will go away if we clear the board of all creatures, but by strategically casting new creatures after we've paid for Pestilence sweeps, or just leaning into our high toughness creatures, we can usually keep the enchantment around while whittling our opponents down to nothing on board and no life in total. And speaking of creatures with high toughness, Gary, one of our two big win cons. With two black and its casting cost towards devotion and a big butt of four toughness, Gary does so much work. Let's say we managed Witches and Pestilence turns three and four. Gary drops and our opponents lose six life while we gain six life. We can then do three damage with Pestilence each turn and because Gary's toughness is four, Gary survives. Meanwhile, our opponent's board might very well be cleared from all that Pestilence, meaning Gary also swings in for an additional two points of damage. What's more, many games will give you enough card draw through Thorn of the Black Rose to have two or even three Garys in hand, which can just spell out GG by itself. Our other win con is a traditional bomb of a beat stick known as Gurmang Angler. Angler shows up in most black decks in Popper and with good reason. At 5-5, that's a hard fish to have an answer for. And the delve ability means we can oftentimes get this out extremely early. Most games will likely have featured us using our control spells turns one and two to start building up our graveyard. And that can be accelerated with, as mentioned, the Whisper Agent Surveil or the cycling from our four Baron Moors that the deck runs. What's great is that if Angler can come out for only one or two mana thanks to Delve, then we usually still have mana open to use a control spell if necessary helping to break through our opponent's board and hit hard for five. In addition to those Baron Moors, the deck also runs three Sign in Blood, a nice play to refill our hand late game or just get us back on curve early. Let's take a look at the mana base. Besides the four Baron Moors, this deck runs 19 Swamps. That's it for the mana base. Why aren't more people playing Popper? Come on! What about the sideboard? As always, these are flexible and customizable based on your meta, but I always like to run a full play set of Choking Sands, which are especially handy against Tron and Affinity decks. I view most of the rest of the sideboard as a way to further customize our control. 
And so I run another pair of Geth's Verdict to swap in for when we're up against Hexproof Bogle matchups. I also really enjoy a pair of Ashes to Ashes. Yes, it'll deal five damage to us, but to straight up exile not one, but two target creatures is oftentimes a life saver when running up against threats that our basic defile can't handle. And I'll also add an extra pair of tendrils in case life gain is extra beneficial for us. When facing spell heavy opponents, an extra duress helps out along with wrench mind, which is much more effective now that astrolabe is banned and usually will result in our opponent being forced to discard two cards, furthering our tempo advantage. But the great thing about Mono Black Control is that it's a highly customizable deck with a lot of other options. This is the list that I personally play, but there's so many other ways to go. A lot of players are already having fun with the new Witch's Cottage, which, unlike Baron Moor, counts as a swamp and can return a creature to your hand. Fantastic for chaining chittering rats. Though some players run a straight up reanimator unearth package to keep chittering rats chaining. Nihil Spellbomb is a great answer to graveyard decks that are giving you trouble. And of course, spells like Crypt Rats are a classic call for those who like a scary sweeper. Finally, of course, if you're made of money, there's the classic black removal spell, which adds great addition to your devotion. And that, of course, is Oubliette, a common card worth a whopping 37 bucks a pop. But however you build it, Mono Black Devotion Control is fun, powerful, and a deck that is built to do some serious impact. Best of all, it can be built for about 50 bucks. And once you build it, like any popper deck, like all popper decks, you have it for life. Be sure to check out that video of Loading Ready Run's Friday Night Popper Fight featuring this very deck. And also be sure to let me know what deck you'd like to see a tech on next in the comments below.